This is not a nightmare. This is not a death machine or an evil toy come to life. In fact, it's not a toy at all. Hi, my name is Milo, and I am the next generation of therapy for children with autism. I'm Daisy Rosario, and I'm on a mission to find tomorrow. But first, let's go back to the past. I'm late. This is Troy. I see you. He was diagnosed with autism when he was two. Spiders. I have lots of spiders. I have lots of spiders. Spiders. Now 19, Troy still lives with a wide range of autistic disorders. He's not alone. Autism is the fastest growing developmental disorder in the U.S., with currently one in 68 American children affected. People with autism spectrum disorders, or ASD, can have trouble with language learning, social cues, and creative play. Troy, like a lot of people with ASD, is very sensitive to the world around him. This is Troy's dad, Chuck. All right, you want to go first? I want to, you go first. Okay, I'll go first. Chuck has seen firsthand how wide-reaching the effects of autism can be. He has sight sensory issues, smell sensory issues, touch sensory issues, hearing sensory, he has all of them. Another effect of that sensitivity, according to many psychologists, is a preoccupation with objects. A lot of times children and adults with autism have what we call areas of restricted interest. And that means that they have a preoccupation uh, with something that really gets in the way of their ability to function. For Troy, that's everything from old cell phones to chess sets to Lego. Pretty much, um, he loves everything Lego. We spend a lot of money on Legos. And who doesn't love Lego? But in order for Troy to feel comfortable in society, he needs to feel comfortable with other people outside of his Lego Quickie Mart. For people like Troy, technology may be the key to bridging the gap between the material world and the human connection. Which leads us back to Milo. Here at an autism treatment center in Dallas, Dr. Carolyn Garver has a lot of experience with autistic children. You've been working in this field for 40 years? 40 years. Wow. Carolyn was one of the first people to prototype robotherapy with autistic children. The response to Milo was pretty immediate. They wanted to touch him, they wanted to talk to him, they wanted to see what he would do, um, they wanted to take him and put him in their classrooms. Like, Troy asked me, want to work with Milo? I said, cool. I think what we're going to try today first is we're going to do, let's practice the calm down module real quickly, okay? Yeah. Okay. Milo is a great compliment to a human therapist or teacher. He's clear, he's calm, he's consistent. These are some of my calms down too. Carolyn and Milo use everything from simple games to counting and emotional exercises. Carolyn selects lessons on a tablet, and then Milo keeps things interesting by combining them with videos and questions. Which one did he use? Nice. You're right. Good job. Milo and Carolyn are a good pair. Milo is reliable, and Carolyn is there to help facilitate with a human touch. People with ASD can have trouble interpreting social cues, like smiles or frowns. Some of Milo's lessons are designed to help specifically with that by demonstrating facial expressions and emotional cues and asking what they mean. They don't understand the perspectives of others. They don't understand emotions. It's not that they don't feel, it's that they don't know how to express it. One of the things we're doing with the emotional modules is try to teach them, you know, how to identify an emotion. I was surprised by how expressive he People was. People are blown away. I mean, when they see him and he can, you know, he, he smiles and he can frown and, and he's got a lot of, he can be angry, he can be, he can have a panic attack. So we're building all of those. Party. in. We can have a dance party. We have a dance party. Yeah. Dance party. <laughs> Milo was developed by a small startup based in Dallas. Here at Robokind, Fred Margolin says that right now, the company's sole focus is helping children with autism. There was a lot of literature that children with autism related to certain robots with faces and things like that. Robokind is responsible for the tech behind everything Milo says or does. They designed Milo, programmed his animation and dialogue. Milo speaks at 82% of normal speed. I hope you will help us change the world. That's very important because a lot of children with autism have problems perceiving language up to a point. Autism is still a mystery in many ways. We don't know how it develops, and we can't fully account for why it's on the rise. But until we find the cause, there are a lot of research-based solutions that can help the current autistic population right now. And Milo's not the only robot. There's Romibo, who's fuzzy and tells stories. And there are companion robots like Now. There's a lot of finger-pointing in the fight to end autism. But if we could take just some of that energy and use it to help the autistic population that already exists, that effort could really go a long way. 
you know, me, I, I, I want to know what the causes are, but I can't worry about them because I've got the population already. I want to be able to help the people that I see every day.